Okay, so let's do an example uh, using the quotient rule. Uh, I want you to differentiate this function. Differentiate, um, let's call this a, a h, okay? h of x is x squared over x cubed plus one, All right? I want you to use the, uh, pro, uh, the quotient rule and differentiate uh, this function h to come up with h prime. And uh, you may want to pause this um, video. And when you think you find the answer, you can come back and take a look, all right? Okay, so um, you may, it may help you uh, if you identify the numerator as f of x and the denominator as g of x, because that's you know what you do uh, in uh, applying the quotient rule, especially the first time. After you get used to it, you don't have to do this. Um, and you probably uh, can do it uh, very quickly. All right, so what is the derivative? Uh, h prime is going to be, now remember, I, I personally like the denominator, working on the denominator first because um, I can just do that quickly and get it over with. You just square the, the original denominator. That's all you have to do. The numerator uh, requires a little more attention. So you take the derivative of the top, which is 2x, multiply it by the original denominator without differentiating, and then minus the top times, well, actually, I guess um, the way I wrote this is um, g prime, see that? g prime uh, times f, right? So the denominator, you differentiate the denominator, which will give you 3x squared plus zero times the numerator, which is x squared. All right, and so that is uh, what you will get when you take, you apply the quotient rule. The denominator is the same, square, and then let's simplify the numerator. 2x to the fourth plus 2x, that's distributing this 2x to each of these uh, terms. And then what's the second term here? It's three times x squared times x squared, which is three x to the fourth, you can further simplify this to negative x to the fourth plus 2x all over x third plus one quantity squared. So that is your um, derivative, okay? So that's not too bad, right? Uh, if somebody says, find the derivative at one, um, then what do you do? Well, you just plug in one. So it's f prime, uh, sorry, h prime uh, at one is equal to, go ahead and plug in one, that's negative one plus two, all over uh, one plus one squared, which is going to be one over four. It's positive one over four, okay? And uh, so that's quite simple, right? I, I don't think it's going to be really difficult for you to uh, learn to use the, the, um, the quotient rule. Okay, so uh, we're going to use this uh, in another uh, setting uh, to see a, a more general and very nice formula. Okay, so that's our next thing. Okay, so I think you'll like this because this extends our previously known uh, method, uh, namely the uh, power, power rule. All right, so if, f of x is x to the negative exponent, where you know here n is positive, so that means negative n is negative, right? So this is equal to, of course, one over x to the nth power, right? Yeah. All right, so the thing is, this is a quotient, okay? Uh, f of x is simply the constant function one, g of x is x to the n, right? So what is the derivative of this? Uh, sorry, I guess I should not um, have call this f and f together. So, um, well, okay, so maybe I should not be labeling this as f and this as g because the, the whole function is um, called f of x. All right, so maybe what I should do is, this is a numerator and this is a denominator function, right? Okay, so with that, um, let's go ahead and apply this. The derivative of this function is going to be, remember the denominator is squared, now the, the derivative of the numerator is zero and then times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator, which is x, sorry, n, x, n minus one times the original numerator, 
Okay, so this turns out to be negative n x to the n minus one all over x to the two n. All right, we can further simplify this. This is a little tricky, so be very careful. First, negative n, that's just a, a constant, okay? It's an integer. And then how many x's do I have? Well, when you divide, now remember, you gotta be careful here, okay? When you divide an exponent of x by another exponent of x, what do you have? What happens to the exponent? It becomes the difference. So it's going to be n minus one minus two n. All right, let's do uh, an, uh, some arithmetic here. Um, negative n times x to the, what's the exponent? Well, n minus two n, that's negative n minus one, right? Of course, you can write this as negative parentheses n plus one, but you don't have to, okay? So notice what happened here from the beginning and at the end. So the exponent has now become the coefficient. And what happens to the uh, new exponent? It's one less than the original exponent, which is exactly what happened under the power rule right? You move that exponent to the front, subtract one from the old exponent to create your new exponent. So this is what is known as one of the extended power rules. Right? And here we extend what we had before only for positive exponent, positive integer exponent, to, and we're going to extend it to negative integer exponent. All right, so the extended power rule is still the same as before. X to the n, the derivative of the x to the nth power is n times x to the n minus one, subtracting one from the numerator. But now we can say this for all integers, not just positive integer, uh, for all integers n, whether n is positive or negative, all right? So let's go ahead and do a couple of examples. This is cool, right? You don't have to memorize a new uh, derivative formula. Okay, so what happens when you differentiate one over x? Well, so one over x is simply x to the minus one. When you take the derivative, it becomes negative one times x to the, now what's one less than negative one? It's negative two, right? So you can write this as negative one over x squared, okay? Not hard. What is the derivative of um, one over x to the 13? Okay, so this will be the derivative of x to the negative 13, right? And that's negative 13 times x to the negative 14. You can also write this in this way, negative 13 divided by x to the 14th. Okay, so that's uh, that's very nice. Agree? Okay, give you uh, give you one more example, and then we will stop. All right. So let's say you have uh, well, okay. So you have a function f of x is x cubed. Minus, this is the kind of thing you'll be doing a lot of in the next chapter, actually. An application of uh, or whole kinds, a whole bunch of applications of the derivative. Okay, so you have this polynomial function x cubed minus 7x squared plus 8x plus 1, right? I want you to find where um, you have a um, horizontal tangent or where the tangent line is horizontal. Horizontal, of course, means the derivative is equal to zero, right? Uh, all right, so you take the derivative. And uh, so you have 3x squared minus 14x plus 8. Okay, and you set this equal to 0, of course, because uh, that means the derivative is equal to 0. That's what we mean by horizontal tangents. All right, so you can factor, I think. Can you? I think you can factor in this case. It's 2 and 4. So two and four, minus and minus. Okay, making sure this is right. So this is three x squared minus 12 x minus two x, that's negative 14 x, and then plus eight. So this works. And so when two factors multiply together is equal to zero, one of them has to be equal to zero. So x is either two thirds or four, okay? And indeed, in these two points, the derivative of this function, 
is going to be equal to zero as uh, we have just shown. And these are the only two places. Now, let me just show you what um, this tells you, okay? Uh, and why this is such an important application. Um, of course, what we did, we didn't use the quotient rule or the product rule or anything fancy here. All I did is to use, you know, basically the power rule and, uh, and apply that to uh, a polynomial. And what that means is when X is two thirds, that's like, you know, one, two, three, four. Okay, so where this is four, and when X is equal to two thirds, okay, by the way, uh, when you plug in zero for here, uh, F of zero is one. Okay, so this function actually is going to look like this, where this is two thirds, you know, uh, it's gonna go up, and then you have the horizontal tangent. And then it starts to go way down, um, way down here but here it becomes horizontal the tangent becomes horizontal again and it starts to go up okay and so what this is indicating is where the derivative is equal to zero you have a relative maximum and the relative minimum the highest and the lowest points uh why is it important well obviously you know if this is describing for instance a a, 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 a profit function or something this is where the profit is me um, maximum where if this is describing uh you know the loss or something or uh, an expenditure or um, cost or something you want to minimize the cost right so this is one of the most fundamental and useful applications of calculus to find maximum and minimum points okay uh, you will do a lot more of these uh in the days to come and that concludes our section all right go ahead and do your homework and have fun. I will see you next time.